Hey everyone, it's Rob and Sandra again with another installment of Nutrition Nuggets. And what are we talking about this week, Sandra? Hey Rob. Oh, hey Sandra. Well, 80% of the population have given up on their resolutions by February, by like this time of the year. So, <laughs> so we thought it would be uh, fun to check in with you, Rob, oh. to, about your SMART goals from episode 53 and January 1st. Oh, I didn't realize you were going to be checking back. Well, yeah. Uh-oh. I mean, it's like, <laughs> Uh-oh. I, I'm not your accountability partner or your coach it's, per it's, se. I'm just, just cheering everyone, you on. Everyone out there is. Right. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Well, there's good news and bad news. So we'll, uh, we'll get to that. Uh, well, we'll get to that right now because that's why we're all here, right? Yeah. What was your, uh, I forget what your goal was. No, I didn't forget. What Was it yoga? Well, I, I jokingly had a huge list of goals and ironically, after listening to that list, I've actually done quite a few of those. Eat less cheese, drink more water, eat more beans, exercise more, yoga, learn to play the piano, swim more, run more, and walking in the morning. Yeah, I'd say like half of those. I've, I've actually, a lot of those I was already sort of doing, but I'm definitely doing them more. So I, I think seven of those you I can, are. I consider that a win. Yeah. Yeah. That's I'm not running more marath- than half. Not running marathons yet or swimming laps in the pool, but uh, yeah, a lot of those other ones, I uh, I actually, they just kind of worked their way into my schedule, which was kind of a, a nice perk. So yeah. So what, so tell me the one that we actually did the uh, SMART goals with you and we're specific was the yoga three days a week in before breakfast in the living room floor uh, for 20 minutes because you wanted to have more flexibility and stretching and make it more of a habit. It sounds like uh, a game of Clue. (laughs) It was Rob on the living room floor (laughs) doing yoga every morning (laughs) for the win, right? Yes, yeah, uh, that's that's what my goal was, and uh, yeah, I'm I am doing yoga, and I'm I'm actually doing it every day, and that's the thing with me. Well, it's probably not just me. That's the thing with starting a routine, and if you have realistic expectations, which I think was one of the the things on the smart goals. If you have, because my expectation was to do it three days a week. And for me, once I start something, I'm just like, well, I'm just going to do it every day. Because if you can manage to fit it into your schedule and that part of it works, which for me it did, then there's no reason I can't just bang it off every morning. And and that's what I've been doing. I've been doing it every single day since, well, I didn't start it right away. We were on vacation for part of part of January. So I think I started it mid to late January is when I started doing my my yoga. But since then, I've done it every single day and it's it's easy now. It's just, I have a specific sort of, not a time per se, but I guess it's part of my morning routine. I get up, I have my coffee, I do some work on the computer, and then I do yoga. And, and it's then, part of your habit, which is great. Exactly. It's because it, that part doesn't change for me every morning. It's It's pretty consistent. So I know that and that's why I chose that time because I knew it would probably work because there's not things that are going to disturb me or get me off track at that time of day. So that was an important part of making it work for me is picking the right time. Excellent. That's yeah. great. And I think uh, part of, you know, you wanted to, I think every year you say you want to sleep better and get up earlier. And I think that, I don't know if it's the yoga, but you seem to be getting up early and uh, before seven most days. So that's working too. Yeah, sometimes. So we've started watching this new show and it's thrown me for a loop because now we stay up late, which does a few things to me. When I'm up past, say, nine o'clock, I get the munchies and then I start to eat things that I probably shouldn't be eating. And then it affects my sleep and then I sleep in and then I don't get to like, you know, my morning routine is messed up. So and so uh, eating less cheese on your New Year's resolution, um, I guess that's one thing you might eat in the evening, eh? Uh, sometimes, yeah. It's, it's usually one of my go-tos. It's but I'm probably trying not to, more beans. I'm trying to, well, <laughs> it, I'll eat hummus if we have it in the fridge. Okay, so there you go. So I, I am definitely, my options for late night snacking have uh, have increased. I, I have more more than just the cheese that I go to, but uh, I just don't like late night snacking because it just wreaks havoc with the rest of my night and my next morning. So that's something that I've, I've dealt with a few times 
recently that I'm trying to get into the habit of going to bed early every night because it's it's so much better. I get a better sleep and like I said, it doesn't mess with my morning. So something I've realized. The other funny thing that's kind of happened and this happened when we were on vacation in Mexico and it's something that I've always wanted to do but never really wrote it down. It was just one of those things. And when I have my coffee in the morning, I put cream and sugar in it and I thought, you know, what an easy way to sort of reduce the amount of fat and sugar in my diet is just to drink my coffee black. If I can start that habit, that would be a good thing. And it's a tough one because it tastes good with the way I drink it. And when we were in Mexico, where we were staying, it was just easier to drink it black. It was difficult to get our hands on the cream and sugar. And so I just got in the habit of every morning, just was like, oh, there's my coffee. It's black, whatever. And I got used to it and now I like it. And I've been drinking my coffee black every morning since January 1st. And I kind of am hooked on that flavor now. So that's kind of like a surprise little routine that started for me that's was unofficially on my on my uh, like list of goals, I guess. That's awesome. You know, actually, same thing. I, I still drink cream or some sort of milk or something, oat milk, but I don't add sugar anymore. So... It's kind of interesting how the sugar container hasn't really moved uh, in the last two months. Yeah, that's that's great. That's a good thing. The other thing for me that I wanted to start back into is working out. I've, I sort of go back and forth with getting into a workout routine. And so, yeah, that's something else that's happened that was kind of unofficially on the list. But uh, I've gotten into a pretty good routine. And, and again, with that, it's finding a routine, for me anyway, and I'm sure a lot of people are the same, but the routine is the key in, in finding something, a time of day that works, and a routine that's not going to like screw you up. Like If you have a routine that says, okay, every Monday I'm going to do this, and every Tuesday I'm going to do this, and so on, that's going to last for one day, two days, and then something's going to happen that's going to screw up your schedule, and you're, you'll be like, okay, well now I'm I'm off schedule for the week, and so I just, sorry, Sandra, did you want to say something? Like consistency then? Um, a routine, I guess, that is flexible, has flexibility built into it. So my routine is basically I have three different workouts I do. I've got like an upper body workout, a cardio, and a lower body. And day one, I do one of the workouts. And day two, I do a different one. And day three, and so on. So, But they don't have to be on specific days of the week. So Monday, I might do my day one workout and Tuesday, I might be busy with other stuff and I don't get to it. So Wednesday, I would do my day two workout. So it's awesome. It, yeah, it, it allows it allows some interruptions in my schedule that don't throw off my routine. So that's working. Well done. Yeah. And it feels so good to work out. You know, I'm not I'm not trying to be Mr. Olympus or anything. I just want to like work my muscles and and do a bit of cardio and just keep things working and flowing and it really makes a difference it helps you sleep it's uh you know keeps you in shape and that sort of thing too so it's it's a good thing to try to get yourself into good job rob that's awesome oh well thank you the one thing i haven't done which sandra keeps teasing me about this and i I don't know that i actually committed to this but she's like well you haven't started running that marathon yet and I'm like, I don't think That's why I that... can't be your accountability coach or <laughs> No, but I and the reason I mean I do I think I I'm did just say you. I did say to you that there was this ten K race coming up and I'm like, Oh, I should do that. It's kind of like in our in our neighborhood ish area. And I did one a few years ago and it was kind of fun. But uh I, I did say that I, I might like to do that. But I've got a few other things like my working out and just other things. I think my plate's full enough for physical stuff at the moment. It's tricky to leave the house without taking the dog. And he's not, it would be hard to run with him, like consistently go for a run. Yeah, because he'd just be biting my heels all the time. <laughs> That's right. He's a herding dog. So <laughs> that would be great if he was, if he was like a running dog, I'd definitely do that. Because we walk the dog a couple times a day, but yeah, no, he'd just be biting my ankles or stopping to smell a tree and I'd get yanked off the chain and <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work. Anywho, that's, uh, that's where things are at. I hope everyone, uh, who started a goal is having success with their goal. And, uh, 
If you're not, maybe go back and, and give the episode a listen. What It was episode 53. 53 yeah. And see if you can pinpoint m- what might be giving you some grief. Yeah, if the confidence factor was less than seven, like if maybe you set your goal too broad or it wasn't specific enough or it was, you know, every single day I'm going to do this and then you didn't do it for a day or two and then you totally got off the, the rails, that might have um, affected your success. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, just give it a listen. You might, you might be able to figure out what's, what's going on and correct things. All right. Well, thanks for listening. Uh, We'll be back on Monday with our full episode. And in the meantime, you can check out our YouTube page. Uh, We're putting stuff up there pretty regularly. Uh, We've got our Instagram and our Facebook page. You've got Sandra's website. If you haven't been there, there's tons of information, blog articles, really interesting stuff there that uh, uh, you can check out. It's mywifethedietitian.com. And you can always email us your questions and comments at our email address, which is mywifetherd at gmail.com. All right. Until next time, I hope everyone has a great week. Thanks, Rob. All right. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for joining us today on My Wife the Dietitian. If you like what you heard, don't be shy. Leave us a comment or review and be sure to share our podcast with your friends. If you'd like to hear more, hit that subscribe button. You can also follow us on our social media pages for updates, episode trailers, and other odds and ends. For more info and links on what we discussed on today's episode, check the show notes. We'll be back next week with another informative and fun-filled episode.